As Chris said, uh, my name's Ivor Roberts. Um, I'm on the Perth committee and my um, role on the committee is to assist with these technical talks. Um, the talk tonight, um, um, Bob Watchford. Um, Watchall, Watchall. Watchall, sorry, Watchall, Watchall. sorry. Watchall. <laughs> Watchall. Um, for, the past, for the last 14 years, um, he's been compiling evidence that giant asteroid impacts have been responsible for much of the geology and mineralisation in the eastern Yulgarn. A large circular feature was observed by our speaker in gravity data of the Yulgarn region in May 1999. And as I understand, it's actually Watchhorn impact structure, it's called. Oh, modest. Modest. He <laughs> um, recently conducted a ground truthing ex exploration trip to find the required diagnostic shock features to validate the discovery of this impact structure. In his presentation, our speaker will present evidence to confirm this megastructure, as well as highlighting empirical correlations between the largest nickel, gold, copper, silver, lead, zinc, and rare earth deposits, and the rings of impact structures. Our speaker is currently a consulting geologist with extensive Australian and overseas experience. He's held numerous roles for WMC resources, including chief geologist. He has worked at various locations, including Mount Magnet, Cambalda, Kalgoorlie, Norseman, Stahl, St Ives, Gold Operations. He holds a master's degree in geoscience from the University of Melbourne and a Bachelor of Applied Science Geology from the Western Australian School of Mines. Please put your hands together to welcome to the podium Bob Watchhorn to present his talk on meteorite impacts. Well, I don't think any, I've got a couple of lakes na named after me um, and I reckon if I get a meteorite impact named after me, no one else is going to name it after me so I'll name it myself. I'll <laughs> when I'm up there I'll know that I've left with a big bang. Um, just in terms of, I don't think people realise how, um, well, I think it's uh, meteorite impacts, when you look through the geological literature on um, anything you care to um, study, they don't rate a mention. They are starting to get a little bit of a mention, but uh, I was looking for stuff on metallogeny, um, just straight geology, and they don't rate a mention. I think that's because of the old uh, uniformitarianism versus uh, catastrophic uh, clash that was probably 50, 60 years ago. So all of you guys, I'm sure, are all uniformitarianisms and things happen gradually and you know, the gold and everything comes up from underground and by whatever method. And I'm just proposing another method and I've got the proof right there that they happen and that they're 600, 500 and 600 kilometres in diameter. Um, so when you just say quickly these things are 10 kilometres in diameter, I think the one that caused, uh, I call it the WIS, watch on impact structure, um, that it's probably between 15 and 20 kilometres in diameter and so twice as tall as Mount Everest hitting the earth at, um, I don't know, 50, 60,000 kilometres an hour. H huge, um, when people say they all break up in the atmosphere, they wouldn't even feel the atmosphere. They don't even feel the earth. Effectively, they uh, bury a crater. So something 10k in diameter in a split second forms a crater 35k deep and up to sort of like two or 300 kilometres in diameter. And the earth, not liking this too much, immediately pushes back up again to so get um, almost immediate isostatic adjustment. And uh, I think the problem that's happened is that people study craters on the moon, solid rock, study them on Mars, solid rock. Um, it's just a totally different process on earth. It's like the, uh, something coming down into jelly and so the impact feature around the actual um, or the crater and the rings around it here are going to be just hugely greater than what you see on the moon for the same sized object. Apart from the f fact Earth's got a lot greater uh, gravity. <coughs> <coughs> so if you note, note the, uh, the, it's a, 
the uh, moho on the proper big craters always is buckling up underneath. So you end up with a lot of domes rather than a lot of craters. Um, there's two or three really major impacts in the world. Uh, Chicxulub, the uh, one that knocked off the dinosaurs, and uh, Breeder Fort, 300k, Sudbury, 250k. Um, this is like, I think, a fairly recent um, world gravity from satellite. My eyes fell out my head when this popped up on the screen. Uh, so that's uh, Chicxulub. So the actual recorded size of Chicxulub is that little yellow thing in the middle. And these, th those big white circles <coughs> around, they can only be from that impact. And the, and the Gulf of Mexico is uh, the shape, exact shape of the uh, crater. Uh, that's uh, six, that's over a thousand K in diameter. And the ne next lot of stuff pushing up from the south is actually, uh, so you don't see a perfect circle there. Same thing with Sudbury, you only see half of it. Two that, I, that aren't recorded, but you will be the first to see them here tonight. <laughs> is, uh, and so Chicxulub has got a huge amount of, uh, like it's very recent, uh, as far as I know, it's got no gold mines or anything like that associated with it. It's got heaps and heaps of oil and it would have been a very thin crust where it hit. Um, in, uh, in South America, you've got this one here. The thing about when the craters on Earth are that they form concentric circles um, and they're very, uh, like, they really are round. And I think that's due to the fact that you've got a thin crust over a plastic mantle. So you've got, got the uh, one there in South America. So that, that one there goes from there out to, out to there, right, right in from the um, Bolivia and uh, Paraguay, is it? Or one of those. And the, uh, the big gold field, uh, Caracas or whatever the, the gold field is, sits around there. You've got another one sitting in there under sea, and you can actually see it on Google. Uh, none of these have been recorded as far as I know. Um, and there's uh, all the um, Munes Garas, is it? Uh, gold mines all sit around there, and you can actually see the, the arc in there. Good old South Africa, world's biggest producer. The Vredefort crater is that little yellow one. 300k in diameter, doesn't even rate a mention when it comes to the other, the, the big circle that's there, which is this one here that goes right around there. That's over a thousand k in diameter. And I did notice a uh, um, uh, posting on a blog or something from a satellite where they actually have seen, and I can find, I, every one of these ones I've looked on Google Earth and I can find the center and they're all the same. There are probably a 10k ring of heaps and heaps of granites with a centred around the impact, and that's the same with the one I've found. So I'm sort of building up a list of things that you need to, to identify a crater on Earth, and I've also built up a list of where you go to find these um, shatter cones that I've got here. There's also another big one on the uh, south end of Madagascar, I'm not quite sure what that is. It doesn't look quite right. It hasn't got the rings around it. Good old Olympic Dam. I'll tell you what, there's a huge uh, impact centred around between, uh, so if you take a point midway between Prominent Hill and Olympic Dam, uh, there's uh, another one of these uh, five, ten kilometre circles with all the granite sitting there and the 300 metres or whatever it is of sediment that the Olympic Dam's in forms a beautiful circle around one third of it. Uh, no doubt whatsoever that's, an, that's a big impact. Uh, now this one here has just been found last year. Much to my disappointment, I was hoping to be the first one to find it. 
I'll show you that one right at the end. But um, uh, Andrew Glickson, I uh, saw his name mentioned there. So a very helpful man is Andrew. <coughs> uh, so when I first um, well, I'd found the impact and I was doing fly-in, fly-out up at Gidgee Mine and all that. Nothing to do at night, obviously, apart from drink beer, so I started putting a lot of this stuff together. And people kept talking about all these ferry light layers in the uh, Hammersley Iron Basin. And they couldn't find the impact, or they couldn't find the earlier impacts. <coughs> and I think I've found the earlier impact. So the actual Hammersley Iron Basin actually sit in this crater, half of this crater. There's another one over there, which has once again got all the, uh, all the <coughs> granites right around it in a circular sort of arrangement. And there's actually, um, uh, I think, goat something or other, paddock or something up there that's actually um, uh, shattered. Uh, I think it's uh, shock quartz. So that'll probably be my next trip north. I'll go across those ones and see, see what I can find. But you can see, once again, even though half of them will be out under the sea, you can see these uh, circular arrangement of the, uh, the rings. They're fairly subtle, but the fact that they go right through something that's as geologically complex as that means that they're, they're the last thing that happened there. <coughs> so they're younger than uh, 2.5, which is about when the... Um, sediment started. Uh, Yarra Baba is the only confirmed impact of any dimension anyway on the Yulgarn. Uh, there's many, many circular features. Uh, just to query, how many circular features do you think uh, you, you would find like on the Yulgarn that are greater than 100k off the top of your head? Ten, right? Eh? Um, there's some up to 600k. Not saying that they're impact structures, but they've got all the features of this impact structure. Now, there's su supposedly one impact <coughs> over 20 kilometres diameter every million years. And if you take the area of the Yorgam, which I did, and uh, uh, um, tally them up over the last 2.6 billion, you should end up with 22 craters there. Um, so Yarrabubba's there, somewhere around there. Um, that's um, the the Wiss, and that's the the inner the, that's the inner ring, that's the outer ring, which you really can't see on this untreated data. This is um, just uh, the Booger gravity of the Yorgan. Unfortunately, I drew on it and haven't got a blankie, but you can actually see, you can see it clear actually. So that's Mekathara down to Mount Magnet, down around and back up there. Just bear with me with this, because it probably sounds like bullshit at this, <laughs> at this, uh, <laughs> at this moment, but uh, and th this is the, because it's untreated gravity data, but you can still see it in it. And you can track them around there, and that's the centre. This one here, it just leapt out at me when I saw the, this data. <coughs> and that's huge. And that's centred, um, there's Southern Cross. So it's centred sort of triangular between Southern Cross and uh, Kalgoorlie. Uh, something that's a little bit more believable is, th is uh, the radiometrics. Um, you can't fudge that. Uh, well, I could have fudged it, but I just wouldn't have had the time. Right, so radiometrics takes probably the top three or four metres, that's it. So it's not looking at any structures down further into the earth than at the top three or four metres. And remember that uh, the Yulgarn is very, very complicated geology. It's got belts of uh, greenstone, it's got granites popping up everywhere. It's complicated and there's only one way you're going to get these pretty much perfect cir <coughs> circles. And, and it's not by uh, 
hot plume and it's not by all the other orogenic collapses and things that I've read about. Really the only thing that can give something that size with all the features of the big ones that have been, that have actually been proved to be um, craters is, is an impact structure. There's actually 20 there. Uh, down, down here, the, these are actually the rivers. Oh, sorry, I would have been in the tertiary. They're the rivers. The rivers on the Yulgarn follow the rings. I've often <coughs> wondered why the darn things, they, they just keep going around in great big circles. This one here goes right over the top of the Albany Fraser Belt, goes right around. There's a whole series of them around there with Norseman right at the centre. So there's been a big impact right near Norseman. The new, uh, we'll go to the next D. Nova um, Bollinger sits right there. There's a big impact just south of Nova Bollinger, which postdates the um, the Albany Fraser Zone. So I'm not quite sure. Maybe Jens can tell me about uh, what he thinks of uh, how old, what age he thinks no <coughs> the um, new ore there is compared to the uh, the Albany Fraser Zone. But if it's got anything to do with these impacts, it's going to be a lot later. Um, got once again, you've got Norseman sitting in here. You've got uh, the big ring that sits right around here. You've got uh, Kalgoorlie, Coolgardie, right around to the nickel mines down here. You've got a big ring there with Cambald on it. <coughs> Don't ask me how this happens, but they sit on it. They're not the cause of it, because obviously Cambald was heaps before that ring because it goes right over there. I don't know why, um, <coughs> there's just a lot of unanswered questions and it goes right down to the Lake Johnson mines, which I drove past heaps and heaps of times working at Norseman the last six months. So I think people have got to think a little bit wider than just a stratigraphic model for Cambalda. I think they've got to think a little bit, a lot uh, wider than the various things that they, where they think the gold mines are, why they think the gold mines are where they are. And you, once again, you can't fudge this data. This is just the, ra the raw geology of WA. Like little pixels of what the raw, raw geology is. There's no doubt that there's some big rings there and, uh, and they sit. This ring here is actually another one. The other ring that uh, round Kalgoorlie sits in there somewhere, so you don't see it. You hardly see the wisps. You see the one up near Mount Magnet. You see these big rings way out from that, like that's a thousand k across there. But it's there. Uh, you can't deny that that's not a, a great big ring. And um, everybody's seen these for years and years and years and years, and I've never heard a decent explanation <coughs> a, as to how these things could form. But when you combine the uh, the geology data, the uh, geophysical data, and the radiometric data, as far as I'm concerned, uh, probably 80% sure that they're big impacts. And the big impact should be there. I mean, people have been looking for things about 20, 30k in diameter, and, uh, and there are 20, 30k diameter rings there, but the actual outer rings go for hundreds of kilometres on Earth as opposed to tens and <coughs> up to 100k on the moon, except for a couple of big ones. The biggest mare on the moon is 2,400 kilometres wide, and that's, form, that's formed by multiple impacts like this. The uh, cratons actually probably formed, well, positive they formed um, by multiple impacts. By the refrigeration effect of something at minus 80 degrees, centigrade coming down 20k in diameter, what a huge fridge that is, hits the earth and then releases all the gas and you know what happens when you spray a, a can of stuff under pressure, you get a huge cooling effect so, and it burrowed 35k down into the ground and it's just almost instantly refrigerated that crust. So I'm sure that the, uh, and uh, straight after these happened, that's when the craton stopped. Like when it stopped, uh, it just 
went rigid, like within a few million years. There's nothing else can actually do that than a, than a big, big impact. So cross-forming events, um, nobody can, they've tried all sorts of ways to explain uh, the huge cross-forming events in the Yulgan in particular. That's exactly when the, the major impacts happen. And that's, when, that's exactly when the craton solidified. I guess if you go along a little bit further, that's the, the next lot. And that's the, uh, the tertiary, not the tertiary, the uh, uh, was it, uh, Cambrian through to um, Permian sort of era. Strangely enough, that's when the main, main gold happened. Main gold <coughs> happened, main gold happened. And you, if you look at the stratigraphy, they all tie up the major unconformities with all the debris from beneath, all tie in with this, this, same, this same period here. Except that the, down the bottom under Cambalda or under the, between the lower lot of greenstones and the top lot of greenstones, that's your 2.7, 2.75 impact that was up in the Pilbara that's been found by the spherulite beds. All holds together really well. All right, so the, um, oh, I can just read that. I estimate it's about 2.64 um, billion years in age by the fact that it's uh, cut by the east-west proterozoic dikes. It cuts the granites, which are 2.66 to 2.68. 2.65 to 2.68, and it uh, predates the gold mineralisation, which is 2.3-ish to 2. Uh, this was the one that started it. Um, I actually uh, found that while I was actually looking for um, uh, well, why the gold deposits actually came into the uh, eastern gold fields. And I was trying different ways of looking at the geophysics to try and look down down through the layers and uh, we had the seismic traverses so I was comparing the angle and the uh, and everything of the the big um, arcuate thrusts and then the um, rift the rifts which I presume would be more vertical underneath <coughs> so I sort of studied it and um, Effectively, that, that's the 250k diameter ring. The, that's the middle one. There's another one over there. There's some dis, uh, dismembered ones down near Kalgoorlie. And they're earlier, which, which actually makes a lot of sense. Um, this one here, I think, is the most telling. Um, basically, all, all I did was get a first horizontal um, uh, of the gravity. <laughs> Then I twid twiddled the little thing on ER mapper on the uh, left hand side until I got the got a, got the uh, lower um, register or the low, lower wavelengths to actually come up um, so that you could see them. Well, I'll put it this way: I've never seen even now, and, and I actually uh, did this. I gave this talk to the WMC geophysicist, sort of stirring them a little bit, say, look. Look outside, whatever you, because at that time all they ever used gravity for, all they ever had with gravity was contours. And I said, How come you do all this stuff with mags and you never do it with gravity? Didn't make sense because gravity on a big scale and even on small scale is fantastic for structure. But anyway, if uh, you can see the ring around there, then there's another one around there and another one around there. So you've got. Uh, three or four asteroids have come down, they've gone uh, bang there, bang there and bang there and, and this one's the first one overlapped by that one and overlapped by that one. Like that. And you can see that in the seismic as well. The ones down around Kalgoorlie, I think, uh, they've all come down around the same time as well. And evidently when you do get a big, big uh, asteroid come through, often they do break up you end up with a whole whole lot of close together impacts. 
the um, outer ring, and I was interested in trying to find these, um, these uh, shatter cones, and you're not going to find them 5k under the ground, so uh, I was after anything that gave me a, a surface clue as to where they might be. And that, that ring around there, that's, uh, uh, th this sort of mimics the surface geology of the goldfields. Whereas the uh, previous one, and I've never seen this in a geophysical map either, that's the, they're the rifts, the rifts coming down, little horse and graben and squares. The only thing I've ever seen in the geophysics <coughs> of the eastern goldfields are the big long wavy lines which are a little bit more like that. But that's actually looking down at about 30k depth. So. Yeah, physicists, uh, you can have a bit of a talk with me about how I got that, if you like. <laughs> Steve? <laughs> They're very quiet, re retiring people. Right, uh, this is... Um, so that, that section there is, is actually the rings, sort of tilted over. This is a, so this is the big travis that goes from, uh, well, goes all the way from Mount Magnet area along down the highway and way out to Mount Yi or Lake Yi or something way off to the east. Um, might be my imagination, but there's a circle there. There's another circle there with another ring, <laughs> ring around it. Once again, I'm just pointing things out. I'm not quite sure how in the heck it would actually do it, uh, you know, how, how it happens. All I know is that we'll produce a great big trough and then the earth produces a great big dome. So to me, that's what they look like. Then you've got another one uh, down in there. And I've drawn on here. Um, you can see a uh, big... You can't see them actually that well, but uh, big arcuate structures coming around there. And uh, you can also s then see the, and, and that's about the depth of the, uh, going into the older greenstones. You can see the moho actually comes up all the way along there yeah. and then down. I think there's a lot of impacts actually out further to the east, but because um, I can still see heaps of these uh, dome type things out there, but I didn't have any surface data. And that's the interpretation, the standard interpretation. Everybody had was fixated, absolutely fixated on east dipping, flattening, um, thrust faults. And you can see them, but uh, yeah, I'm not convinced. I mean, I know they're there, but uh, why the, why the why aren't there any other interpretations of this data that I've ever seen like this when everything's interpreted like that? That's the uniformitarianism view. This is the catastrophic plus uniformitarianism view. Um, oh, I went through all the different, <coughs> different ways of um, uh, all the different uh, time periods and uh, the deformation episodes and things. And they, all, they, they pretty much all pointed to a very dramatic end to the um, Yulgarn. Uh, now, thinking when I was up at Gigi and I wasn't very far from uh, these places, so I was just over here, never ever got there, but I thought if I'm going to ever find anything to prove these things, I've got to actually find find structures on the ground that I can go straight to and um, gives me a fair chance of actually finding uh, shatter cones and uh, shocked uh, textured rocks. So I f figured that uh, the Google Landsat and Google Earth was the way to go. And this is where I got the most flack really when I spoke to people about this because I'd send them a, an image like this I'd say, you've got to enlarge it right up, you know, like on Google Earth, so you can actually see the image, you can see the things running around. And everyone to a T said, no, I can't see anything, Bob, you're having yourself on. 
which of course those that know me that that's like a red rag to a bull so <laughs> Uh, but anyway, I could find the things all the way, ra all the way from not far north of Kalgoorlie right up to well beyond Waluna. And I figured that they seemed to form best where the roads were because uh, they form best where there's um, uh, greenstone and uh, granite. So effectively all the gold mines are all up these greenstone granite belts, so therefore the roads are up there. So it actually made the job of finding these things easy, finding the rocks easier. Another data set, DEM. Uh, Fritz Fitton got this one for me, I think. Um, this is Menzies Agnew, so you're not looking at little a little area, out to Laverton, down to Menzies. Um, balloon is just off the top. These are smaller ones that probably are not on any of those other um, data that we've seen. So this, this lot here is, are, the, are the big ones from down south. Th these are the paleo channels. Uh, that lot there is a, a smaller one. These, that's the very centre of uh, the WIS. This one here with all its radial things around is the next one along. That's the one, that in there is the uh, rare earths deposit, the pipe of rare earths. In here is uh, the um, Teutonic, Kim Teutonic bore kimberlite. So you've got like really deep access by in these centres. So it all ties in that it's uh, not just a natural feature that's sitting on the top. Um, yeah, you can see these ones, they go right around. These ones just go out for ages, but I didn't get a big enough uh, slice. This is the very centre of, th this is where the centre of the WIS impact is. Uh, once again there's a magnetic one here which is actually very very similar in uh, to look at to Yarrabubba. There's another round later granite there, that's the centre granite there. Uh, the Teutonic Kimberlite sits in there. Hive of activity. Ah, more interesting, um, ring structures and associated gold deposits. Um, they definitely form around the ring. That's actually a, a small one in there. There's another one there, another one down north of Cal there. These ones, including Kalgoorlie, fall on the big, the big one that's on the radiometrics uh, down um, south of Southern Cross. You can actually see the rings running around. Kalgoorlie sits right there. And you actually can, that's the, uh, the gold mines. That's the, south, that's the one up north. That's a uh, southern cross one sits there, but a bit hard to see, except you can see the arcuate nature there. Um, this was done in 2001 or something of the, I just went through and put down where all the gold mines were on off this plan that's underneath, the geology plan. The thing I couldn't understand is how come the nickel mines all sit on it. They All the big nickel mines sit right on the rings. All the big gold mines sit right on the rings. Including Nick Georgetta's uh, two Neweys up here. Uh, down here it gets a bit confusing because there's a ring running around in that direction as well. Well, I would look anywhere where the right rocks intersect these rings because that's, if you, if you did that a hundred years ago, it would have saved you a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the moment you, you're looking, you're looking <coughs> at a, a thousand K strips of country looking for favourable beds and for uh, cross-cutting shears and things. Uh, the, the actual actual success rate of these is astronomically greater than any cross-cutting nor nor wester shark bay liniment and all that type of stuff. Mind you, uh, my greatest hero is um, Tim O'Driscoll. So I mean he, he and he he actually found this ring in nineteen ninety something, but it wasn't this one, it was actually therefore I can call it the Watchorn ring and not the O'Driscoll ring. <laughs> His actually sat in there. 
and he called the Kukaini Ring. And there is, there is a centre there as well. Um, and so then I, having worked at a few different mines, I got hold of all the mine plans and particularly the intrusives because the intrusives are, are more likely to follow the rings and perhaps the uh, gold deposits themselves. So every, every single one that I looked at, um, and I looked at more than these, couldn't fit them on, every one of them, uh, the uh, structures that were open at the time the gold came were in line with the ring. I guess that's the easiest way to put it. They, they're, not, they're not forming in line with the country like this, they're actu <laughs> actually the structures that were open are in uh, around the ring. So you can see the uh, the that's the centre of the the mag ring, uh, the gravity ring. You can see probably clearer on this than on the uh, one with all the complicated gravity on it. The actual ring of gold mines around that, like and. There's probably only um, a million ounces up the top end there that's not on those rings out of all the gold mines up in the northeast in Yulgarn. Another ring around this one uh, northeast of Cal. Uh, well, you got that one there, but that the centre of that sits down about there somewhere. But it was a bit iffy, so I didn't put it in. But there certainly is a little ring and, and it's the centre of, of the big belt that runs through Cambalda and uh, Kalgoorlie. This one here, well, you got a, a little ring there. And Mount Magnets, uh, because it's mainly granite, uh, you, but wherever you've got greenstone, that's sandstone, and that's uh, Mount Magnet there. Wherever you've got greenstone, where the gold mines are, are on a ring. So the, and these are straight out of um, a blue it or someone's uh, paper, um, these two next uh, seismic sections. Um, so the Wall Wallaby Mine sits in about here somewhere. It sits just in from the, uh, pretty much on the, on the influence of two of this, this uh, crater here centred on Laverton and the outer ring of the Watchorn one. And uh, you, you actually, it's a lot harder to see these things if you've got them in uh, up. So I've reduced it up into the corner and you can see the actual uh, outline of big, um, well, a lot fainter, but very, uh, very sharp uh, cutting structures that cut all the, uh, the big arcuate faults that dip to the east. I think the Later theory, or maybe one of the later theories, is about the uh, gold forming on domes. Well, I can see exactly why that dome's there, because this lot's been pushed down by an impact. And uh, good old St Ives, Victory Mine, and um, same thing. If you go back, uh, back to there, Vic Victory sits in there. And uh, there's a very dissected crater in there, but there's also the big one that's on the um, one of the outer rings of that big one that sits down near Lake, uh, west of Lake Johnson. Once again, I mean, you can argue what are they, but they, the thing is they do fit where a ring should be. Uh, there's a huge, and, and one thing about uh, these impacts as they form just uh, hugely micro-fractured and main-fractured country is that there's big, big zones of totally fractured country sitting in exactly the right direction all up through here, all up through there. Which, um, and, and like, it's done wonderful things to the geology as you would expect because this is, this is in the collapse area this lot here has probably collapsed down from there, big circular failure, which is what happens to the outside of these craters. And uh, the theory of uh, stacked domes, big ones, going to smaller ones and then a gold mine at the top is correct when you look at these, but I'm just saying that it's not, it's not due to uh, 
just warping of the country and uh, over, over thrusting of uh, eastern plates over the western ones. Some of them probably are, but the big gold mines are right on the rings. And I'm sure if you look at the seismic of all of the big gold mines, you'll find that that's probably the same. I just got two of them. Better keep pressing on. Um, I've copped the most flack, uh, and deservedly so, um, by saying all this stuff without actually proving that anything I, I say is actually correct with what they call prima facie evidence. Um, so prima facie evidence is uh, rocks that in, or, and other geological things that include shock free features in quartz. And take my word for it, that's them. <laughs> Just, um, they are absolutely textbook um, shatter cones. A little bit straight, a lot straighter than you ones you see, generally see, which people have got from the earth, because they've got them from small uh, impacts that are near the surface. And uh, they get the cone actually gets uh, straighter the deeper you go, because it's under isostatic pressure. And also rocks that have got uh, weird and wonderful um, uh, spherulites and, and glassy quartz and a sort of a waxy um, feldspar um, uh, ground mass. And they're exactly the same as uh, ones that, uh, that I've looked up. Like when I went to find these things, uh, the only picture I, I'd ever seen of a shatter cone was like this. And uh, we didn't find any of them until we were about three in, so what, I wasn't really quite sure what I was looking for. So there's probably a lot more of them up there than what I've found. So there, there's our uh, luxury vehicles, complete with dog. So we actually plan, planned the route up and then we went off out, in, out on the tracks to get round to these ones and then back in and up to Waluna, which is just up here. And we found uh, the, so the yellow ones is where we found the st structures. Down here we found the rings, but we couldn't find any quartz or anything on them. And we didn't have a clue really what we were looking for anyway. But once we got our eye in, uh, my wife Val, she was a fantastic little scout, I can tell you. She found heaps more than I did. And uh, John Liebig, a uh, mate that a few might know from way, 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 way back in the uh, 70s came up with us. He was looking for gold, didn't find any. <laughs> so this is, uh, like, because I've run out of time, I'm going to just go really quickly through this. So that, that's what I found uh, as a, a melt, like a spherulite rock, and that's uh, the same rock, or the same grains uh, from Chicxulub. That's a, a really vitreous, glassy rock with heaps and heaps of little little glass needles in it, which you like, you don't, just don't find that in quartz. You get glassy quartz, but you don't get glassy quartz with little needles all through it. Huge pressure and temperature. And while I haven't cut a thinny of that to see if it looks like that, I can tell that if I did, it would. Because you can see all the little, uh, the little, uh, the quartz that go along, the uh, little striations, I guess they'd be called. Once again, th these are from various places around the world. That's the one that I found there. That's uh, one from a place in Bavaria. Uh, this is a, a melt rock, and that's the melt rock I just had there. And very noticeable, the, the actual um, laths and things, they form in a sort of circular arrangement which you quite, I can't quite figure out how they do it, but it appears that the, you get uh, growths of this and then they grow around it. <coughs> this one down here is just a, a clastic rock, which is everything's been blown up in the air, everything falls down, and uh, so you got sorted. This is from um, France, and this is the uh, same sort of thing. A lot of rounded ones, quite a lot of uh, lath-shaped ones. Uh, there's been at least two impacts because some of the shatter cones that I found 
they uh, went up and then turned 30 degrees and then went in the other direction. I figured there must have been more than one anyway because I couldn't quite figure out how you get instantaneous quartz on a ring that then is shocked. So I figured there's been, um, you've, you've had an impact, you've had the rings formed, you've had the quartz come up, and then you've had another impact. In fact, you've had another two impacts in this case. That's that same one. And the, the typical thing about them is that they're all glassy and they're all different colours because they're just quartz or rock that's been melted into quartz and then uh, just deposited. So they've got all different coloured clasps. Very uh, typical. Centre of the um, ring is, uh, as you from that magnetic one earlier, is just a contorted granite, so I didn't expect to find anything there, and we didn't. Lovely spot though, the terrace is just up from Leonora. Uh, in situ shatter cones, up on the Agnew ring, so about um, 15k north of the um, Agnew turnoff, uh, on, on the way to Waluna. You can actually see them sitting in there. You can see other ones that have, uh, everything's on the side of a hill, but these ones are actually in situ. You can actually see the, uh, um, everywhere with these things you see curved surfaces. That's um, the shatter cone sitting on the ground. So I didn't buy them on the net. Would have cost too much. While there'd be some unscrupulous people, would I'm sure. $35 each, I wasn't going to pay that amount for them. <laughs> um, this is a, like a textbook shatter cone. In fact, it's better than anything I've seen in a textbook. Uh, rods uh, slightly splaying in both directions. You can see the cones uh, sitting in, sort of like this, all around. They they get holes through them, I think, I guess, blasting of air or something through them, smooth-sided holes through them. And I've ne never seen that recorded in anything to do with them, but I'm sure it has been. Um, also, in this case, there's a, on the other end here, there's actually a, a shatter cone that's uh, developed in the other direction at right angles to this. Everyone's looking at their watches. That's uh, Mount Keith, uh, so you're up another um, 50k, shatter cones on the ground and uh, shattered quartz, and that heads straight for the guts of the Mount Keith pit. So th this is out here and you've got these big structures across the Mount Keith pit. And yet Mount Keith is right on the ring, so work that one out. <laughs> and Mount Keith is actually an intrusive uh, sill that's not actually, it, it is later than the uh, surrounding ultramafics. 2710, 2.71 billion years old. This is in situ shatter cones which are um, uh, these sort, all sitting in a big rows. Uh, and this this is uh, is the felsic rock that's up in the uh, up here, which doesn't look anywhere near as good once I washed it. <laughs> a bit of a silly thing to do. I wasn't going to go back and get another one. Well, that's sort of proof, like uh, that. Um, well, it's not a made-up story that I've just got these rocks. They're actually in situ. Uh, this one here is the, this one, no, the, the, no, that one there, and it's, uh, you can actually see, that. I'm pretty sure that's carbon, uh, like a fool I washed it and it, and it all came off, <laughs> so, but in actual fact it, it looks like the whole thing's uh, burnt, uh, burnt along these striations. That's the another view of the rods on there, and they've all got little little centres to them of of whiter looking quartz. 
This is up on Honeymoon Well, so you go up another 40, 50 k towards Waluna. Getting a bit late by this time. And uh, there are the striations along the side of it. That's that uh, rock that I said with the funny circular arrangements of, um, of laths. When I first saw it, I thought, ah, it's just, uh, you know, heterogeneous, um, oh, um, there's no structure to it, but there's a lot of structure to it. When you look out the other side, you can see them as well. And that, that I think, relates back to that other uh, one that, from France. Like, it's not just a, an intrusive felsic porphyry, apart from the fact that it actually doesn't feel like any other rock that I've ever come across. That's uh, the same plan as the first one with... Uh, I, I was trying to figure out how to get them on the angle, but that the, these things point basically... They're pointing back to the centre of this here, and some of them point further to the, further round. So I'm pretty sure that uh, this impact and then the next one and then the next one, somehow or another, they've, uh, they've formed these. Uh, so the rings were easily identified. You could see the, the hills um, when you're about 5k away, ring of hills. Get up on top and you can track the things in a big arc around, so exactly what was on Landsat. Um, plenty of prima facies evidence. Now this is the, that's the killer for anyone who says, no, nah, no, nah, they're just uh, plumes or whatever because plumes don't give you that. And there's at least two major impacts on, uh, from the evidence of this data. There's my old mate John Liebig. Tall cow. <laughs> Look at the gut. <laughs> right, uh, just to finish on something a bit more interesting. So the, the ones that uh, I'm talking about are this circle here. Sort of relatively ill-defined. The, uh, the um, Olympic Dam one is this one here, which shows up a lot better on the satellite one. I've gone in and I've found the core of that. However, what about this great big one over here? <laughs> like, and uh, all these things up here, circular things are in, lined up with them. All the way down here, right down to here, right down to there. Like that's <coughs> 1,200 kilometres 1200 from there to there. And there's absolutely no doubt that that is an impact because this little centre here is, a, is that um, impact that I pointed to on the, which they say is 80, 80 k. In fact, I was just talking to um, Andrew Glickson about it and I said, Andrew, do you realise you've got a monster by the tail there? And he said, you've got to prove it by all the uh, prima facie evidence, Bob. And I said, well, well. Cairns is just here somewhere, isn't it? Yeah, I'll go up and I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. 